Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to an all-new Weekly Art Challenge review video. I'm your host, BJ Dell. If you are new to the channel, I basically do one of these videos every single Wednesday. At the end of every week's video, I give you guys a word prompt for that week, which you draw a design based on, and then you post it online. If you want to take part in these challenges, stay tuned to the end of the video. I will tell you exactly where you can post your designs. Then the following week, I take a handful of the submissions and do a review video like the one you are watching now. If you're a return viewer to the channel, you might notice all this looks a lot different. I redid my studio, so stay tuned. I will eventually do a new kind of studio tour video for you. But last week's word was pig. So let's see what you guys came up with. Right guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video today. Last week's word prompt was pig, so let's see what you guys came up with. The first one is Stephen M, and Stephen came up with this pig design, I think he said for a local barbecue company. Just a really cool design. I love just the simplicity of it. Works really well for logo work. I think sometimes with people, when they start logos, they try to get too complicated, get too flashy with it, and it doesn't really read well. You really need to think, for a branding standpoint, you know, what makes the most sense Sense, what's going to look good on business cards uh, in this case like napkins cups what have you and I think this one is a really strong logo uh, and he actually posted this he used the uh, golden ratio to do this so I'm not going to get really super detailed and deep into the golden ratio that could be a whole nother video itself but uh, honestly if you guys are kind of struggling with designs and and wondering how to make more interesting designs uh, and stuff like that and some of the principles behind design work uh, Steven used this to come up with a fantastic logo so definitely check it out do some more reading uh, look up the the golden ratio also the Fibonacci spiral and you will kind of have a little bit better understanding of everything that Steven did here to achieve just a really fantastic design. So a great job, Steven. Thanks so much for sharing that this week. Uh, next up is Nikki C. And Nikki made this one. I think Nikki said back uh, 2014 was when she first did this initial kind of concept design for this, which I've got a separate one here. She posted two different ones. So we've got the original one here and then the kind of reimagined one over here so one thing to bring up with this is definitely if you guys are making leaps and bounds you know with your artwork if you're getting better over time and you had some good ideas before dig through those old sketchbooks dig through you know any uh digital work that you did before and revisit them uh you really be surprised how far you've come and some of those ideas that you had back then can kind of be redrawn and using your new skill set you can turn you know old ideas into something new and I think this is a great example of this you can see everything here was kind of basic as far as coloring it was almost just the the drop fill of colors here so you've almost got just kind of like the uh, the base layer colors or color flats and then here with the new one you know we've got some better highlighting some better shadowing and just makes for an overall you know more interesting design of course the the background here with the sky and the uh, clouds you can see just a night and day difference between these two over a six year uh, time frame so definitely with that uh, like I said just go back and revisit your work see exactly what worked back then as far as an idea maybe it didn't work as well in the application of the process and just revisit it and see what you can come up with but a really good design love the pigs love the the overall just kind of scenery here in the background I think everything works really really well and just a really strong design so thanks so much for sharing that this week Nikki uh, next up is Mike and Mike's got this adorable baking pig selling mud pies for dirt cheap so I just love the idea behind here and you know the sign up here and then down here just a really cute idea uh, and really brought it together with the overall illustration. Uh, one thing here too, you've got kind of a straight on design. So everything's very much just almost like a symmetrical front facing design, uh, no different perspectives or anything like that. And the reason why I wanted to show this off, number one is just a fantastic design, but I think people get caught up too much in you know trying to get the left side and the right side to, to look the same. And especially with Procreate, you know, there's that built-in symmetry tool and some people rely on that a little bit too heavy. And it really makes for just not a super interesting design. And this kind of shows you why taking the extra time and 
you know, making the left side different from the right side it really works to kind of bring your attention in. So just like with the wood here from the front of the table, you've got, you know, kind of this shaky curve here to where it's not, you know, the most uh, just flat piece of wood, which I think is great. Same thing with the, the cakes here. So the drips and everything look different. The overall stacks look different. And if you did this using that symmetry tool, you know, this one's going to look exactly the same as this one. It's not as interesting. It looks a little bit too mechanical. And I think this one just does a really good job of, you know, not relying on those crutches and going for it. Textures in here are great and the colors are just fantastic. I love the way everything kind of fades down here with the grass and same thing up here with the sky background. Uh, you'll see with this, there's no need to go in and do just a crazy, I've got to fill the entire page with color. Uh, this just works really well to give the hint of the sky here and the hint of the grass down here as it fades into the bottom and just an overall just awesome, awesome job. I love seeing Mike's work when he posts in the group. So thanks so much, Mike, for that one. Next up is Hannah and Hannah's got this little piggy and I think this one's really good too. A front facing, you know, kind of symmetrical design, but I like the the way the circle kind of frames everything, but you didn't use it as a frame per se. It didn't lock the pig into there. So we've kind of got the, the hairs here coming out over top of the circle. I think that was a nice touch. It kind of frees up that. Also here with the circle coming around, kind of this hint down here and here that trails up. I like that too. It's not, and you can kind of see here. Uh, once again, it's not symmetrical. Uh, we don't have this kind of part right here, the same over here. So it's just this hint of it coming around. I I think that's really nice and then the overall texture here just building up that kind of hair on the pig is just really really well done i love the different colors so we've got kind of the white highlights you've got the darker pinks in here and then almost kind of the grays down here to show that shadow and i just think those are built up really really well and you did a great job just adding a lot of depth and dimension to that one so Really good job on that one, Hannah. Uh, next up is Steve, and Steve's got this just great pig with his uh, bears that he's posted quite a few of before. Just love seeing kind of repeat characters and all this, and definitely with the the word bubbles here, is there anything you won't eat? Ask your uncle. You ate my uncle. No, you Ewok. He just knows what I like. So throwing in a little bit of misdirect humor there is always fun to see, and just the overall thing with Steve's work the character design is just spot on everything has so much personality in Steve's work and uh, you can really kind of use this as I've said before kind of like a master class in, in learning character design and and what works and what makes a design really stand out I uh, like to hear same thing with the background like with Mike's didn't go too crazy with the background there's a hint of color there but you know it wasn't done just to fill in extra stuff to make it feel finished and kind of like that it doesn't detract from the overall design which is just really cool and uh, once again, with having multiple characters in here, they've all got different expressions, so they're definitely giving off their own personalities. It's not the same character over and over again, and they all kind of speak different. They have that different feel to them, so just a fantastic job, Steve. Um, next up is Al, and Al's got this traditional piece, so I've said this before and I'll say it again. Uh, if you guys want to take part in these challenges, you do not have to submit digital work. Uh, really, the Keep Creating group and any artwork that you want to tag me on in, on Instagram or Twitter, uh, it, it's for artwork. So if you guys don't have an iPad or you know digital tools, if you just have a piece of paper and a pencil, definitely feel free to use those and submit them. I think Al did a great job with this. So kicking back to Steve's here, you know we've got a lot of word bubbles here telling the story, which I think is great, uh, but. With Al's, we have, you know, no words, no anything except for the illustration itself. And you kind of have a story being told to you with this. And I think it works really well. So right off the bat, you know, color pencils on, I think he said just using cheap color pencils on a piece of, uh, you know, print paper, printer paper, copy paper. Um, so you can achieve some really cool results with, you know, what you have on hand. And I think the overall kind of feel to it, it really has that children's book illustrated uh, quality to it. And I think that's really, really well done. And of course, the overall theme of the illustration itself, like I said, gives you a story without words. So you've got the pig relaxing here, but you know, the wolf in the background, and I've said this before as well, you know, just being able to tell a story with a one frame illustration is 
you know, really, really hard to do, but at the same time can be really rewarding if you're good at it. And I think uh, Al did a just great job on this. Just love the textures that the, the color pencils give off and the use here kind of having the inside of the house here, you can kind of see what's in here, but with the kind of, I guess, purple tone here, everything's not 100%, you know, outlined and filled out to where it's just kind of that hint that it's hiding in the shadows. And that's one of the things that's really hard to kind of achieve with colored pencils. You don't have, you know, the, the digital tools to fall back on to kind of fake some of this stuff. I think Al did a great job there. Just the overall warmth of the piece with the colors he selected is just really, really cool. And the pig, of course, just a kind of great pose that the pig's in. The only thing here with the pig I probably would have changed, just looking at it, is maybe having the chair itself scooted back further to where his feet are down on the chair uh, with just kind of this part of his calves here sitting on there. That's actually not too relaxing because you got to have pretty strong leg muscles to put them up in the air like that. So maybe having the, the hooves on the chair just to, to give a more relaxed look would be my only thing. But just a really, really awesome picture. Also, thanks so much for submitting that this week. Uh, next up is Dale. And this pig is just awesome. I love the personality this thing gives off. Just the, the overall design of the character is great. The... The look, the expression is just spot on for the feel that Dale was going with this and just really, really cool. Color choice is great. I love the kind of framing of it with this circle. You can barely see the circle, but it's there. I think the colors for that, kind of that lime, dirty green, brownish color is just awesome. And then kind of the, the slime and snot dripping off of them here. The fact that you didn't outline that and just went with, you know, a white, drop the opacity but had it over top of the other layers so they kind of show through there it was just a really wise design choice and same thing here with the drips coming down from the pig here i love that these are a lighter color than the actual body parts here and it kind of flows down without being outlined i think once again was just a really really good design choice so really good stuff and if anybody is on instagram uh dale's Instagram handle is Dale, P-O-R-T-E-O-U-S. So definitely check out Dale on Instagram. He's got some awesome stuff. So sure to hop over and give him some love. Next up is Carrie. And once again, traditional piece. So like I said, if you guys don't have the digital tools, share the traditional stuff. And this one's just really fantastic. Once again, colored pencils, uh, kind of using a whole sepia tone with this, I think is really cool. And just the overall design, once again, with this great character design, love it. Uh, and just goes to show you, you know, using uh, different te techniques as far as uh, pressure and how hard you're pushing down on the pencil, uh, that you can get all these different tones. I'm assuming this is probably from one, maybe two different, probably two different um, pencils. Might be just from one, but uh, just, you know, goes to show you as far as much like with digital work um, and why I love Procreate that, you know, you can get different line weights by pressing, you know, different levels of pressure on the, the screen of the iPad. Same thing here, I, you know, you got to learn if, if moving over to digital is like your... Uh, fix it for everything. It's not really going to work that way because a lot of the techniques from traditional then relate over to digital because of the pressure sensitivity that you get. Uh, so, you know, using traditional and finding out how hard you have to press here and the shading techniques, those are going to help you once you move over to, to uh, digital. So I know a lot of people feel that they're kind of being held back because they don't have the digital tools, but really the, the more, I guess, solid you are in your foundations with using traditional tools, the better you're going to be once you move over to, to digital. And even then, there's still a learning curve once you hit digital. So just seeing work like this is just really, really fantastic. And like I said, I just love the, the value uh, shifts here with the technique used with the color pencil. It's just a phenomenal job. And just the outfit here for the warrior pig is just 100% just awesome. So fantastic job, Carrie. Thanks for sharing that this week. Uh, next up is Kevin and Kevin's got this pig kind of playing in the mud bath here. I know Kevin said he kind of struggles with textures and 
um, or more with shadows and highlights. And we'll talk about that for a little bit here. So once again, whenever you start to add in shadows and highlights, you really want to, you know, first and foremost, determine where your light source is coming from. So here we've got the kind of highlights on this side. So basically we know light source is coming in from this top right hand corner. So that pretty much locks that in. Uh, one thing to kind of remember when you are doing shadows and highlights, and we talked about this last week with, uh, you know, keeping the same techniques used throughout the piece and not having too many different styles going on. Uh, here we've got, you know, a lot of highlights that are kind of done almost airbrushed. You, they kind of fade from this white kind of highlight area into the base and there's not a distinct line but when we get over to the shadows there's definitely a distinct line down here uh, so i probably would have with this maybe faded in the shadows over here a little bit to match the highlights or vice versa made the highlights over here just a little bit more lined or harsh just to match up from the left to the right uh, likewise we've got the like i said the light source coming in from here so the shadow here I mean, it's correct as far as where the shadow's at, where it falls, but you also have a shadow on this side, and this is where the light's coming in from, so we're not going to have a shadow on there. Uh, went really hard as far as doing shadows throughout the mud here, but didn't do any highlights over here to kind of show that we've got that light source coming in, so uh, the mud actually looks a little bit flat because of that. Um, assuming these maybe bubbles, I'm not sure. They're kind of big for bubbles if that's what you're going for. This one especially has kind of like a curve to it. I would have, let me drop my size here, would have gone with a uh, just a little bit more round and something like this and kind of done them, you know, over. And then you can even, when you're doing mud and stuff like that, even have like a section like this to where it's like the cutout and it's kind of not solid and you've got it kind of see through there that adds a little bit more I guess uh, character to the mud itself uh, but then getting back to the shadows here so we've got the the light source coming in from this way so with the shadow here I wouldn't have probably put it clear up to here kind of had the shadow more coming out you know down this way if you needed to uh, something like that and that would give you a little bit more direction from the light source as far as a believability goes. Uh, and then here going into the background, once again, like I talked with the, the previous ones of uh, not, you know, having a background thrown in just because you needed a background thrown in. Uh, it looks kind of like an afterthought here uh, just because we've got a really kind of meshed out and well thought out character design here. Same thing even with the mud is pretty well done, but then they're just kind of just almost random lines going through here and same thing with the the mountains here just really just not well thought out and just kind of looks like let's just throw these in there to have something um and definitely looks a little bit plain because once again here there's absolutely nothing going on in the sky there's no change in uh you know value from one side to the next you could throw some clouds in here if you wanted to or even if you didn't want to do that you know you could have just kind of different blues fading in and out and same thing here with the mountains you know having some some highlights up here towards the top uh maybe some shadows you know down back here to, to kind of give those a little bit more dimension so i'd say definitely next time try to to work on the backgrounds if you decide to do a background kind of flesh those out just a little bit more and pay a little bit more attention to you know kind of making those uh, tie into the overall design and definitely too with this I would say look into different color palettes uh, the the greens here with the mountains into the green here and then this just solid blue it's a really kind of dark blue uh, so definitely check into you know finding complementary colors and what colors work well when they're butted up against other colors because these greens just look pretty off between those so uh, but a really good start can't wait to see more of your stuff Kevin so thanks for submitting that this week uh, next up is Ryan and Ryan's got this motor hog no bacon design kind of a parody based on the motorhead logo uh, so this one really cool love the idea and going off on the the parody route with this is really neat. Uh, definitely, if you guys have watched my previous videos and uh, are thinking or starting to get into merch by Amazon, uh, doing t-shirts and stickers and stuff, um, 
uh, of course stickers not through merch but uh, stickers through like Redbubble or, or wherever uh, definitely kind of understand where merch stands on this stuff merch would not like this uh, Amazon doesn't play well with parody uh, even if it's like a gray area so definitely stay away from that but I like the design I like the the thought behind it definitely cool uh, the overall pig design really cool ties into you know the same look of the classic motorhead logo uh, a couple things here definitely watch out when you're putting your stuff against a black background uh, what it's going to do to some of your lines so there's a lot of, of different kind of widths to this chain here because you can't see the black line over here so these kind of change in size around here and then definitely here's the biggest thing to really be careful of uh, you know, this gets really thin right here, and then the little chains here, like it's almost like the ball chain, you lose almost all of that ball chain to where it kind of just disappears into that black. And I think having that, you know, a lot thicker, maybe a less of the balls coming down here, and then all this being thicker is just going to kind of help you solidify that as a design element rather than it getting lost back here. Uh, so good job. Definitely uh, love the look of it. This, I'm not sure if it was done with Procreate, so I'm going to use this as a Procreate kind of uh, tutorial. So if it wasn't done with Procreate, uh, I apologize, but I think it was, and here's why. So we've got the Motorhog kind of logo text here. And you can see it's really, really blurry compared to the main design. So one thing with Procreate, Procreate, of course, is a raster-based program, but despite it being a raster-based program, anytime that you bring in an element and start to resize and move around, as soon as, let's do this here, as soon as you move it around and resize it, and then you move it around and resize it again, so on and so forth. Procreate, for some reason, it loses quality every single time. I just lost my pen. Soul. This is the second time I've thrown my pencil in these videos. Hold on. I'm not even going to cut this out. I'm just going to crawl underneath my table. I'm going to get said pencil, and I'm going to come back up. All right. So anytime you move stuff around like that, uh, it, it loses quality. It doesn't matter if you're moving from big to smaller and then from that to even smaller. Uh, with Photoshop, of course, a uh, raster-based program as well. Uh, it does have you know some vector-based stuff that you can do, but by essence, Photoshop's a, a raster-based program. And as long as you're in Photoshop and you're moving from big to small and you don't take anything small, move it to big, you don't have this problem. Um, I know people have asked uh, the the creators of Procreate before, you know exactly what's going on with it, and they always say, "Oh, it's a raster-based program. That's going to happen." And obviously, that's not the case. Just because it's raster-based, if you're going from big to small in Photoshop, you don't have a problem. So, anytime that you do need to do something like this, and you have the option to take it into Photoshop or another program, I would I would not do a lot of moving stuff around on a canvas itself with Procreate because that is one of the problems that you have. Likewise, I, I know people waited for years for Procreate to have text and it was kind of like the aha moment and that's what we've been waiting for with Procreate getting text. But however, I still use Photoshop for pretty much all of my text uh, with Procreate because of that. And then also here you'll see this no bacon. We've kind of got this arch, lower arch to it, which that is an option in Photoshop if you want to create an, an arch to your text. But with this, I think it was probably done with Procreate. You rasterize the type layer and then use the warp tool to kind of bend it down. And I, I really, I just hate seeing this arch stuff that people do. Because really, I think what you wanted here and what most people want is you want the text to kind of wrap here. Instead, you get this kind of warped, distorted look to the letters, and that's not really what you want to go for with a logo design. You want it wrapped. That's why I love Photoshop. You can actually, you know, wrap the text to a path so you can make a circle, and then you can have the letters follow the circle, which really for a logo design like this is what you want. So uh, definitely if you have the option to go into Photoshop or maybe even Affinity or something like that to finish up, stuff like this and add that text along a path. Hopefully that'll be something Procreate gets later. I know when they had text added, a lot of people said, hey, are you gonna do this text to path stuff? And it's a possibility, I'm sure, in the future. It just doesn't exist right now, but really cool design. That's my rant on Procreate and moving stuff around, so hopefully that helped. 
And the last one up today is Rhonda. And Rhonda has this whole series of pigs. When I did the pig challenge word for last week, I actually thought of Rhonda right away just because she's got this really cool series with pigs. And I love this one. Once again, traditional work. Uh, so acrylics on a canvas board. And I love, you know, when you paint like this, you can see the texture. And I, I think that's coming up in the video. You can actually see the texture of the canvas this was painted on. So I love that. Uh, but once again, using techniques traditionally that can be transferred over to digital, but you need the understanding of those techniques to begin with and understand, you know, shadows and highlights. And this one's just a fantastic job of having this UFO coming up, this huge bright light, you know, that's pulling them up in this tractor beam of light and just the overall uh, highlights here, just how well those are done. It really makes you believe that you've got this just massive amount of light coming out of the spaceship here. And those highlights are just done so well. They're placed perfectly. The amount of highlight against the base color is just awesome. And you can see here, they're really thick up here. You've got kind of hints down here and it just works. And it's so, so believable and so realistic. Just a really fantastic job of highlighting. So I wanted to showcase that one and the color palette too on this one is just fantastic. And that is it for this week's weekly art challenge word, pig. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Special thanks goes out to everyone that submitted designs this week. seems like more and more people are taking part in these challenges, and I really love to see your work, so thanks so much. If you liked today's video, too, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Like I said at the beginning, everything looks different in here, so I'm going to do a new video on the studio, kind of give you a studio tour, walk you through some of the stuff that I use. I know some people have been wanting to start YouTube channels, lately so hopefully if I kind of show you my setup it will inspire some of you guys to start your own channels and start sharing your work as well so last week's word was pig and this week the word is gonna be fruits and veggies so we're gonna do a food theme are you gonna choose fruits are you gonna choose veggies are you gonna do both fruits and veggies it's up to you and then is it gonna be a still life are you gonna make it cartoon or go realism totally up to you so if you want to take part in these challenges, here's how. I started a group over on Facebook called Keep Creating a Learn, Draw, Share Art Community, which I will link in the description below. That's where you share your artwork. But if you don't have Facebook, you can always tag me on Instagram or Twitter at BJ Dell or send them to me through my website. There's a contact form over there, bjdell.com. So that's how you can take part in these. I really look forward to seeing your guys' work. And that is it for me. You know where to find me. So until next time, keep creating. Thank you.